Now, you remember yesterday during our discussion, right the first half of the discussion when we're talking about the law of attraction, many of you were feeling really sleepy and tired and detuned. So many of you here were feeling those feelings. And that was the reason why was that there was a whole group of spirits who, when I began the law of attraction discussion, and I was talking about all of the powerful effects of the law of attraction on us, and the fact that their, their location in the spirit world was totally dependent upon their own soul condition and the law of attraction. And when I had that soul condition discussion yesterday with, it, with all of you, there were lots and lots of spirits who became very, very depressed. And the reason why they became so depressed is they, they came to a realisation that the reason why they're in a certain location in the spirit world is because of their soul condition. And then, of course, where do you go with that? You want to know straight away how to get rid of this soul condition that created your attraction, you see. But they were becoming very frustrated with me because sometimes I'm a little long-winded with my explanations. <laughs> and so it wasn't until about halfway through the discussion when we started talking about you know, the emotions and how to release the emotions and how you can release and grow soul conditions through that, that this, the feeling began to lighten for all of us. Now can you see that that group of spirits actually heavily influenced all of us during that discussion? Right? And very few of us were aware of why we were feeling like we were feeling. And the truth is that spirits are constantly influencing us. Every single one of us has more than one and usually many spirits surrounding us that are constantly attracted to us and constantly influencing us. Now, of course, if you are a person who's known to be a person who can communicate with spirits, how many more spirits do you think are surrounding you? And this is why many people who have the gift of mediumship are hassled constantly by spirits. Right? And so they feel under a lot of pressure, a lot of, uh, and, and they feel a lot of, uh, you know, they can't even sleep many times because they're constantly hearing voices all through the nights and, and it very, becomes very difficult. And it's important to understand why all of those things are happening. So what happens for many people who are mediums in particular is they want to turn off the gift. Right? So many of you here have had that experience, haven't you, where you've felt these impressions come and you've had people talking to you and then you just all you want to do is get away from it because it feels very, very hass it hassles you constantly. So obviously the spirits that are connecting to you in those situations are not high level spirits, are they? Because if they were, they wouldn't be hassling you constantly and keeping you awake all night. They would actually be just demonstrating love. And so what a person then goes down the track of saying to themselves is, why do I get hassled by these low-level spirits all the time who are causing me all of this, you know, sleepless nights and damaging relationships and all sorts of things in my life? And so it's important to understand what is going on for those and in those situations. So what we want to do firstly is just remind ourselves about the soul. So the soul is... So here's my soul, my spirit body, and my material, my material body. What is the soul in you? It's your passions, desires, intentions, emotions, memories, experiences. It's got intelligence as well. So it's all of those things. That's your soul. So this is your soul. Now, yesterday when we had the discussion about the soul and we said we described soul condition and the soul condition was the sum total of all of those things wrapped up together in terms of how much love there is in every one of those. So, for instance, if I have a desire, any desire whatsoever, the thing that determines, that, how that determines my soul condition is that if that desire is harmonious with natural love, then my soul condition will be a bit higher than if that's, that desire was disharmonious with love. Does that make sense? And if that desire was harmonious with fear and hatred and all those other kinds of emotions, then obviously my soul condition is going to be quite low. So can you see how we can have a desire? For instance, let's look at one desire, the desire for sex. It's inbuilt within us. 
right? Now, that desire is there inbuilt within us. How we use that desire can be completely harmonious with divine love, or it can be totally, almost in complete disharmony with love at all. Can you see just that one desire? How our soul condition may range between that great variation, if you like, of harmonious or at one with God, with that desire, or totally disharmonious and, and totally out of harmony with all of God's laws with that desire. Now, that's the issue that we face when we're talking about mediumship as well. So we'll, we'll look at that issue. But it's important to understand that the soul is the thing of importance. It's your soul condition. Remember we said yesterday, your soul condition governs all of your law of attraction. For a medium, it's the soul condition of the medium that governs all of your law of attraction. For a healer, it's the soul condition of the healer that governs all of your law of attraction. So that means if you're a medium and your soul condition is very disharmonious with love, you are going to attract large groups of spirits who are also in disharmony with love. And that is going to influence you greatly. 